And what about what about your experience with MJ in Korea? With Michael Jackson. Oh, dude, that was, that's the story. You know what's funny about it is that's the story that Mariah asked me to extend. <laughs> right. That's awesome. That, you know, she said that that's now beautiful. that he's gone, you may want to, you know, make this a little bit, you know, more, you know, put some more into it. And why not? Because we all want that's more right. Michael. <laughs> more Michael. Dude, but that was a crazy story. You want to talk about a night in history? I mean, it's me, Mariah Carey, and Luis Miguel standing on the side of Damn, the stage. Damn, Luis Miguel was there too? Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, imagine me, okay? The little small town, Santa Barbara, white kid, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm standing on the side of the stage with Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, and Luis Miguel. <laughs> what, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> hey, man, that's a blessed moment right there. That's crazy. Michael yeah, Jackson, but I, but Mariah Carey, chance, and Luis Miguel. Yeah, and, but I get a chance to tell you what I saw. In Guilty by Association, which you can find at demizabook.com. Thank you. For free. So, totally. now, you know, let, we're going to have to, you know, get some, some gravity and reality up here in this situation. Uh, you mm -hmm. actually address some very serious issues in your book. And one of the things that you mainly address is obviously not only a problem with the industry, but the whole world. And you basically address substance abuses. Yeah. Would you mind discussing with us real briefly about what it was that you were dealing with and, and you know, well, your, guide us through your time in that situation and then how, how you pulled out of it? Well, you know, as an, as an, uh, as an alcoholic or as an addict, you're never out of it. <laughs> yeah. Every day you take one day at a time. Right. Um, but what started it was at the time I was working with Mariah. I was working uh, with uh, a lot of labels. I was helping Gray. I, I was uh, between Hot 90 and Power 106. I mean, I, there was just a ton of stuff going on. And I had trouble sleeping. Because when you're running that up and that that, that speed, when it's time to stop and you can't sleep, your world starts to crumble. And that's like, for instance, the Mike Jackson that I saw with what happened to him. Yeah. I mean, this is something that happens in the music business constantly. Right. And in the world, is we have such extreme peak and extreme valley and go through such great things in the bad moment that sometimes we can't cope with them in the right way. Right. So my thing was, is I started drinking, and it turned into two bottles of vodka a day. Damn! Oh, my God. Thank God you're still around. Jeez. No, I mean, I'm serious. And I started, you know, mixing with pills and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that's real my, bad. But, you know, I have the greatest family and friends in the world. Nice. I mean, and, it, it, and it, it's so nice to just I, be a small-town kid, man. Yeah. Because my whole family went, look, we don't care who you are or what you're doing. You're going to stop that. Nice. <laughs> you, you got that, people? That's good family. You know what I'm saying? Comes first. And then good friends. And they're so rare. And when you got good family like that, that within itself is, is one of the main reasons for living. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and let, let me just say this. I have to say this about my stepfather, Terry. But one of the things in, um, in, in addiction is denial. And that's the first thing. You don't believe that you're, you think you got it under control. My stepdad taped me one night and then showed it to me the next morning. Oh, man, that must have been real ugly. Dude, it, it was the biggest realization that, I, I mean, I spent a week on my grandma's floor coming, going through detox after seeing that. Man, that's You know rough. what I mean? I didn't realize I had a problem, but, you know, it, you know, like watching the Michael Jackson thing, like I said, you know, all the stuff that these artists go through are go through and they kind of find these ways to go and then you know one thing to another and end up like well Jackson didn't prove for all the complete yeah I mean and especially in the music business because look at his case really it would any other doctor in the world accept any amount of money to give anybody else to the ball in their bedroom <laughs> uh, they shouldn't well, they wouldn't yep but that's what the music business has become. We've made these idols and we've done these things and we'll do anything to get close to fame. And that's one of the perils that I put about in the book. It's like, look, music business is worse than the crack. 
You can lose your life. You can lose your soul. You can lose everything, or you can enjoy it and not take it too seriously. Live through it. Nice. That's an awesome message, bro. Well, I mean, it's the truth, and that's why, again, it's it's just free. I, you know, I, I'm not trying to make a buck off my story or say, look me and look what I did. I'm saying, look at what anybody can do if they dream. And if you mess up that bad, pick yourself up, fix it, and apologize, and more. Well, Damien, man, you, uh, wow, you, you, you're, you're bringing people into the core of the hip hop industry and, and mixing it with the, the spiritual realizations that a lot of the industry tends to overlook. And, uh, the fact that you're giving away your book, which is something that you will never, there's nothing free in this world these days, unfortunately, um, uh, unless it's, uh, internet porn. <laughs> you, know, you know what I said, though? I did say this, though, on the website. I said, if you like the book, Please donate to my favorite charity. Damn! He didn't even want a donation to himself. Donation to his favorite charity, y'all. The, 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 the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, and you'll read about it in the book with a girl named Becca Solomon who had... Just a quick thing about Mariah Carey again. This little girl was dying of cancer. And you'll read the story in the book, but Mariah helped save her life. Like, it through music. So there's so much there that just, it's real and it's heartfelt, dude. It all ties in. Yeah, that's real powerful, man. It's, it's a lot of documented cases if, uh, you know, people who are cancer patients that might have some kind of an experience with either a, a celebrity or an idol or, you know, certain times where certain uh, uh, m music or songs from their favorite artists will, will actually help them in the healing process. And, you know, when you got these people that, that have these special gifts, but that they're also humble enough to reach out to people in person. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful thing, and it's got to be a great thing to witness. Well, and especially when it saves a little girl's life. Damn right. You know what I mean? Like, and you get to see it. You get to see a miracle. I mean, that moment changed my life. I mean, in, where, where I was in the, in the business, I was a jerk. Like, I, you know, I, at that point, it got in my head. I was drinking. I was with drink it. You turn into a jerk. All right. And then this little girl with cancer comes along, and it really makes you kind of go, wait a minute, what's important here? And those m important messages are shared in Damien's book, Guilty by Association. <laughs> Thank you. And you can grab it to mizabook.com for free. And you can also uh, donate, to his, <laughs> donate to his favorite charity. And you can hear all sorts of stories. But now, now what's next for you with your career, man? Tell us about your, your involvement with production and what you got going on now. Dude, I am having so much fun. I just did the outro for Big O Measy's record, uh, who's on E-40's label, Stick With It. I'm doing a project with Nigel Grange and Sir Bob Geldof. Wow. Um, uh, which is called uh, YouBloom.com. So check that out. We're, we're judges and we cut music and you know, give people input. And it's an honor for me to be able to work with Bob Geldof. <laughs> you know yeah, for I mean? sure. Bob Geldof is a legend worldwide. Well, you know, and Nigel, too, who discovered Sinead O'Connor and oh, a yeah. lot of those acts. I mean, it's a dream come true. And the label's doing great. I mean, you know, we did the L.A. Blues Alliance. And, oh, we just put out Secret Agent Man that we recut with T.F. Sloan, who's the original writer of Agent Man. I mean, I, I have this diverse label. On the I can do rap. And I can sit around and be the Secret Agent Man. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I'm a secret Asian man. <laughs> no doubt. That's awesome. And you got a good sense of humor, so God bless you. <laughs> you too, bro. You too, bro. So th I really appreciate your time, dude. Yeah, man. We thank you for uh, for you know your willingness to share with us and let us know what you know. The fact that you're you're basically you're being very generous in the spirit right now with with all the things that you're sharing. You're you're giving people life lessons. You're showing people monumental moments that they might not be aware of of things that you know they they were aware of in the in the public view. But the behind the scenes, the things that you're willing to share to to help guide other people's lives, man, that's that's an incredible blessing in these days. And we're glad you're a, a part of the positive force. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, you know, I can only do my part, but, you know, there's, everybody's got to do it together. We, it's, it is one race. We are the human race, and we need to get it together. 
<laughs> Word, Damien. We appreciate that, man. Those are those are real words to live by, bro. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank man. you, Damien. Take it easy, bro. God bless you, man. Later.